Hi, Andrew here, back with some more 223 caliber ballistic gel testing. Today we're going to take a look at Gorilla's loading of Lehigh's 62 grain controlled chaos. We're going to shoot it out of a 10.5 inch ARFCOM upper into 10% calibrated ballistic gelatin. Let's get out to the range and take a look. Okay, so ignore the top and the bottom track. They're going in the other direction. They're from a previous tests. What do we got here? We got approximately one inch neck. It's not bad. Significant fragmentation as designed. These fairly large chunks come, eh, maybe, let's see here. Looks like about half an inch to an inch, half an inch, yeah about a half an inch off the primary track. Very deep penetration at 20.8 inches. Nice big temporary stretch cavity. Six, no, seven inches by three and a half. Actually really good performance. You guys probably know that I have been critical of Lehigh in the past, but this actually does pretty well. This is what defensive ammo is supposed to do. Now there is that dangling butt of the greater than 20 inches of penetration, which of course exceeds the FBI max of 18 inches. And if you've been following this series much, you know that I personally don't believe that over penetration is nearly the risk that people often make it out to be. So that's going to be up to you. It does exceed the FBI max. I don't, I'd rather see excessive penetration than inadequate penetration because so long as you're getting through these vital organs, I'd call that a pass. But it's up to you. Let's take a look at the projectile. So as expected, the base of the projectile, of course, was fully intact. It's not intended to expand, it's intended to drop that front portion as fragments, which it does right along here. Now that's something that is probably not a great thing in a pistol round like the RIP, but in a rifle round, it's not a bad thing. And at rifle velocities, these fragments can help turn temporary stretch cavity into actual tearing, which can of course facilitate incapacitation. We'll get some measurements and some photographs of this when we get home. But that's pretty decent performance. All right, first off, before anything else, I want to give a big thanks to Nathan Boer at Aimed Research for that outstanding high-speed footage that we were able to capture. That was only possible because of his cameras. If you want to capture badass high-speed footage like that, definitely give him a call. I'll put the contact information in the description. Onto the performance. So if you followed me much, either here or on my own channel or whatever, you know that I'm sometimes a bit critical of Lehigh's products. In this case though, the results don't lie. It did very well. Now normally we would expect expansion from a solid copper bullet. That'd be something like a Barnes TSX or something like that. But that doesn't mean that this failed. This was intended to fragment. Now, you could say, well, that is a failure, that it's gimmick BS, except fragmentation is a well-known wounding mechanism in 223 and 556. We expect and prefer to see a lot of fragmentation from something like M193 or 77 grain TMK. Those are both outstanding rounds. So the fact that this fragmented is not a bad thing. It's absolutely perfect. It's what it's supposed to do. And the fact that it's designed in such a way as to achieve reliable consistent fragmentation because of engineered fail points is probably a good thing too. It had a relatively short neck, big temporary stretch cavity, obviously no expansion. And here's where the butt starts to come in. 
There is a bit of excessive penetration, if, if you will. It does exceed the FBI max. We've covered this many times. I don't believe that that's nearly as much of an issue as a lot of other people do. I understand why you might consider that to be an issue, especially if you live in an apartment or whatnot. But so far as I know, no good guy who's not a police officer has ever fired around through a bad guy and justified self-defense that hurt another person, even if they do live in an apartment. So I do think that that concern is a bit overstated. However, the part of the projectile that reached the 20 inches or so, it's not expanded. It's still a 22 caliber sized bullet. So during the period of tissue disruption where there's fragmentation and big te temporary stretch cavity and all that sort of thing, lots of messing stuff up. During the period where it's just penetrating with just the core, maybe not so much. So is that a failure? Well, again, eh, probably not. This is also the sort of thing that you would see from a traditional lead core bullet that fragments. So on none of these parts can I really say that it's a failure. It does what it's supposed to do. And we know that fragmentation is a reliable wounding mechanism in a rifle caliber. Altogether, I would say that this is an adequate choice for defense. Is it well vetted like some of the other loads that we've discussed in the past? Well, perhaps not. But that doesn't mean that it's a bad choice. I would have no problem choosing this for defense for my own use, assuming that it functions well in my firearm and it meets my accuracy standards and all that sort of thing. If you want to choose it for defense, not a bad choice. Ultimately, you're the one who has to weigh the pros and cons of everything and make the decision as to what's going to work best for you in your rifle and for your family. If you have any questions, if you think that I got something wrong, as always, please leave a comment below. And of course, follow us over on the discussion taking place on the forum, which I'll link to in the description. I'm always happy to hear ways that we could improve and answer questions. Have a great day.